Hey guys, so this video will show you how to build an automated deferred revenue schedule in Excel. So deferred revenue schedules will be required when you sell subscription contracts, which last for a specified period of time and when the total price of the contract needs to be recognised over the contract period. So in column A we've got the contract number, in column B and C we've got the contract start and end date, and in column D we've got the contract value. In column E, we now need to specify the total number of days in the contract. So number of days in contract, and this will be equal to the contract end date minus the contract start date plus one. The reason why we add one to the formula is because when we subtract um, one date from another in Excel, Excel will always understate the total number of days by one because it will not include the first date within the date range so that's why we add one to offset that impact so we can just drag this formula down and now in column f we need to um, calculate the, the daily revenue amount so the daily revenue amount this is essentially the it's going to be equal to the total contract value divided by the number of days in the, in the contract. So it gives us the total revenue that will be recognized each day for each contract. So we can drag that down. And now we need to specify the dates within our schedule. So we're gonna assume that our schedule runs from January, January 2021 to December 2021. So Jan 21, all the way to December 2021 and next we need to calculate the exact number of days that exist within each month so we need to specify the month end date what is month the month start date and the, the month start date and then the month end date. So the month start date will be the first date of each month. So in January, the first date will be the 1st of January 2021. And now when we go to our month end date cell, we can use the date function formula to specify the month end date. This will be quicker in the long term because we can just drag across the formula to give us the right month end date. So as we want to, um, so we will use the date function and as we want to um, extract the same year that exists within our month start date, within the date function we use the year function, the year function and then we um, reference the month start date cell and that will give us the year 2021. And with uh, now we want to get the right um, month um, date as well. So initially what we'll do first is we'll use the month function and we again will reference the month start date like before. We'll add one to it which will give us February, which is not right but we'll do an adjustment in the days section to give us the right month and date. So this will give us February for the time being and now within the day section we just use the day function we again specify the month start date and then now we do minus one so what that basically does is it will give us the last date of the previous month because we specified february in our month section by doing minus one it'll give us the last date of january so we can just enter that we've got 31st january 2021 and we can just drag this across Okay, and now uh, the reason, reason why it's giving us the wrong date is because we need to fill in the month start date row as well. So let's again use the date function for that. And all this will be is it will be the previous month's end date. Add one day to it. So we use date function again. The year fun we use the year function within the date function. We specify the month end date to give us the year 2021. And then we use the month function and we specify the, the same month end date cell reference again. This will give us um, the month of January and then 
we do a similar thing with the day function. So we reference that cell again. Now we add one to give us the first day of February. We add one and now we press enter and now we've got 1st of February 2021 and we can just drag it across. And as you can see, the, um, the cells in the row above, which contain the month end date, um, update automatically. So now that we've specified the dates within our schedule, we can move on to populating our deferred revenue schedule with values. Now we just need to specify the total number of days in each month. So that would be equal to the month end date minus the month start date. And like before, to get the right number of days, we've got to add one to it. That gives us 31 days in January, which is correct. We can just drag it all the way across to the end. So now we've got the total number of days within each month. So a deferred revenue schedule will show us the deferred revenue balance outstanding at the end of each month. So in order to calculate that, we need to use an if function, which specifies three conditions. So equals if. The first condition is if the contract end date is less than or equal to the month end date, then the deferred revenue balance will be zero. This is because the contract has expired by the end of the month, so there will be no deferred revenue balance left. So we'll do equals if the contract end date, and let's fix our column cell reference so we can drag formulas across. So if the contract end date is less than or equal to the month end date, let's fix the row cell reference. So if the contract end date is less than or equal to the month end date, then we want a deferred revenue balance of zero. That's our first condition. The second condition is if so the second condition is if the contract start date is greater than the month end date then the deferred revenue balance will again be zero this is because the contract is yet to begin and will only start in the future month therefore the deferred revenue balance will only be recognized when the contract actually begins so we'll do if the contract start date we'll fix the column cell reference if the contract start date, if that's greater than the month end date, we fix the row reference, then the deferred revenue balance will again be zero. And that's our second if condition specified. The third and final condition is that in all other cases, the deferred revenue balance will be equal to the total contract price minus all the revenue that has been recognized to date. And what I mean by recognized revenue is all revenue that has been taken to the PL already. So the formula will be the total contract value, fix the column reference, minus all the revenue that has been recognized to date for each contract. So that this will be calculated by multiplying the daily revenue amount. We fix the column reference and then we multiply this by the month end date, fix the row reference, that minus the contract start date, fix the column reference plus one and then close brackets and then we continue closing until the function is fully closed and we enter and that gives us a deferred revenue balance of zero in January for contract number one. The reason why it's zero is because if we go to the contract start date, we can see that the contract begins in July. It begins in the future. That's why the deferred revenue balance is zero. And then if we drag our formula across and then down, this fills in our tables. So now let's check out some values. So if we look at say, contract number 15, we can see that the first deferred revenue balance occurs in May. Um, and the reason why that is, is because the contract start date is in May. And if we look at, say, another example, um, say contract number 
17, we can see that the um, last deferred revenue balance is in June, and there's nothing, there's no balance thereafter. The reason why is because the contract um, end date is 31st of July, so at the end of July, there'll be a zero balance for the deferred revenue as all the revenue will have been recognised and taken to the PL. And if we say, look at uh, contract number 12, uh, so contract number 12 started last year in August 2020. So if we go to December, we can see that the, uh, so if we go to January, sorry, we can see that the deferred revenue balance is £297.53, which makes sense because the total contract value at the start of the contract term was 600. So by the time we get to January, we can see that the, the, the balance um, has gone down and is that's the correct um, ending balance for January. So that um, finishes our deferred revenue schedule. So now we can build our revenue recognition schedule. So our revenue recognition schedule will use the exact same data and the exact same template as the deferred revenue schedule. So like we did before, we need to specify an if function when calculating the monthly revenues, but this time we'll have six different conditions so the first condition will be if the contract end date is less than the month start date. In this case, no revenue should be recognised as the contract has already ended. So if the contract end date is less than the month start date, then we don't recognise any revenue as the contract's already ended. The second condition is if the contract start date is greater than the month end date, then again we don't recognise any revenue as the contract has not yet begun. So if the contract start date is greater than the month end date, then we do not recognise any revenue as the contract has not yet begun. The third condition is if the contract ends during the month but before the month end. In this case, we only recognise a portion of the revenue for the month up to the contract expiry date. So this situation will arise if, so we specify another if function. So if we've got two conditions that we need to specify, so we will use the and function as well. So if and the contract end date if that's less than the month end date, and if the contract start date is less than or equal to the month's start date, then revenue that we recognise will be equal to the daily revenue amount that times open brackets that times the contract end date minus the month start date plus one So that's the third condition. The fourth condition is if the contract starts and finishes within a single month. And this will arise when, so again we specify the AND function, so this will arise when the contract end date is less than the month end date. And when the contract start date is greater than the month start date, so in this situation, the total revenue for the month, recognised revenue for the month, will be equal to the daily amount multiplied by open brackets the contract end date minus the contract start date 
plus one. So that's our fourth condition. The fifth condition will be if if the contract begins part way through a specified month but does not finish within the same month. So in this case, if the contract start date is greater than the month start date, because there's two conditions, we need to specify an AND function. So if the contract start date is greater than the month start date, and if the contract end date contract end date is greater than or equal to the month end date close brackets and then if this is the case the revenue to be recognized will be equal to our daily revenue amount multiplied by the month end date minus the contract start date plus one. So that's the first five conditions specified. So the sixth and final condition is that in all other cases, we will recognize a four months worth of revenue. So this will be equal to our daily revenue amount multiplied by the total number of days within the month. And now we can just close all the brackets. And then we can drag the formula across and go down. And now we've built our revenue recognition schedule. So just to check it out, so you can see in this instance, in this contract, um, in row number 19, the um, revenue only first begins to be recognized in May. So if we go across, the reason why is because the contract only started in May. If we look at another example, we see in this um, last contract, there's no revenue being recognized after September, and that's because the contract ends on the last day of September. And if we look at an instance where the contract starts partway through a month, so if we look at this contract here, it starts on the 23rd of August. So we can see if we go across, we should only recognize eight days worth of revenue in the month of August. So if we go and check that out, you can see that we only recognize 147 pounds worth of revenue, whereas in the subsequent months, we're recognizing the full amount. The amount varies depending on the number of days there are within each month. That's why because October, October's got an extra day compared to September and November, we've recognized more revenue in October. So this is our revenue recognition schedule completed. I hope you found this video useful.